Hello, beautiful mamas. It's Carol from Just Breathe Mama Coach. I'm a coach, EFT, and Reiki practitioner, and I love helping stay at home and work at home moms navigate the overwhelm and create a more manageable and joyful life. Now, I know we're all guilty of this, but have you ever said, oh, I just need a glass of wine to help me unwind from such a stressful day? And then one leads to another. And then before you know it, you're waking up with a headache the next morning and you're wondering, like, how often is this actually happening to me? Um, I think you're not alone, Mama. Trust me on that one. And I'm really grateful today to have our next guest with us to talk to us about alcohol and overindulging. And this is Allison. And Allison is a functional medicine certified health coach specializing in helping moms break free from overindulging. As a mom of three boys herself, she understands the stresses of managing everyday mom life and teaches other parents how to do so without the typical over drinking and overeating one gentle step at a time. She has experienced firsthand the physical and mental effects of ne neglecting her own wellness and is passionate about helping moms become the best role model for their family. Allison believes that health and wellness should be fun and she infuses humor and levity in her personal life and her work with her clients. Allison works with moms in embracing a happier and healthier lifestyle by exploring supportive lifestyle choices and self-care practices that step-by-step -step make overdrinking and overeating irrelevant so they can be an even better role model for their kids. Amazing. Thank you for being here, Allison. We're really happy to have you. Thank you for having me, Carol. I'm, I'm really happy to be here. Great. So please tell us how, how you got started. What's your story that led you to helping moms want to kick the overindulging? Well, okay. So my business is helping moms, supporting moms in overindulging, and that could be in any form. It could be in the form of overindulging in wine, as you mentioned, or it could be sugar, food, or even watching too much Netflix and just helping moms um, kind of get more grounded in their life so that they can deal with the daily stress and anxiety that moms, you know, comes, it comes with the territory, let's face it, right? Mm -hmm. So my substance of choice was alcohol mm -hmm. and my alcohol, I guess I can call it a journey started when I was probably around 16 years old in high school. I started, you know, dabbling in drinking here and there because that's what kids were doing at that age at that time and then once I went into college I mean I really I really got into it I joined a sorority and I was I was binge drinking every weekend and just looking back on it thinking when that all started I remember when I was younger and having that first drink and I really dealt with a lot of social anxiety and once I had that first drink um, it was like amazing. It felt like it was a magic, magic potion that made me, you know, that social anxiety drift away. It made me feel like I was more outgoing. I was more on the shyer side when I was younger. And it just really brought me out of my shell. So I was like, wow, this is amazing. So I carried that habit, that weekly binge drinking habit. Drinking in college was usually like Thursday, Friday, Saturday, sometimes even Sunday, and just going to frat parties and hanging out with girlfriends. And I carried that through my college years, carried that same habit. I'm calling it a habit because it's something I developed over that time mm -hmm. um, every weekend. And, and I ended up getting married and I think I was 27 years old when I got married and my husband and I loved, we just carried that on every weekend. It was, it was our time to, um, you know, drink and hang out and to relax and decompress from the busy week at that time. I was working full time and as was my husband. So it was kind of like I had that mentality in my mind that, you know, you work really hard all week, you get everything done. And then by the time Friday rolls around, it's time to just like relax, let it hang out, you know, release some of that steam, five o'clock, open that bottle of wine or make that batch of frozen margaritas in the blender, whatever it was that I was making. And it just, every weekend, it was just, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, just binge drinking. And my pattern was just being really good on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday with, oh, I'm eating really well. I'm working out. I'm taking care of myself. And then it was almost giving myself permission in my mind to kind of do that overindulging on the weekend. Mm -hmm. And it was just making me feel better about the situation. 
And what I didn't know back then was, even though I was doing it, I knew that it wasn't good for me. I knew it wasn't healthy for me. I, I had a background in nutrition. That's what I went to school for undergrad. And I, I knew I, I was doing it, but I was, I, was, I was not physically addicted to it, but I was emotionally addicted to it. And I just continued that pattern because I just thought, this is what everybody does. This is what everybody that I know does. They kick back and relax and drink on the weekend. So that just kept progressing. I ended up having my twins in my early thirties and that really threw me for a loop. Um, I would say my earlier years, I was drinking more for just like fun. And I thought it was fun at the time. And I thought it was you, what you did and you relaxed and blew off steam. Well, when I became a mother, that completely shifted my whole perspective on things. And I had a hard time with it. And it was like a whole identity change. I wasn't expecting it. I having, I had twins first. Mm -hmm. So not only was I, my husband and I were not bringing one baby home, but two babies home that we had no idea what to do with. Mm -hmm. I remember bringing them home and being like, okay, now what? And I mean, that, talk about stress and anxiety really settling in. And then I felt like my drinking continued, but now I was doing it to really just deal with that stress and anxiety of being a mother and how, I mean, how hard it was and how, um, you know, I remember when they were babies, just kind of wishing, oh, I just, I just want them to get older. So this gets easier. I mean, being so sleep deprived and how, how, how it was so, I felt like it was just so detrimental on my whole well being. And, um, you know, and then I had another son three years later and I mean, my, it just kept continuing, continuing. And then I would say, um, I don't know when they got to be, maybe my twins were around, um, 11 years old or so, 10 years old. I started to really start thinking about it and how my drinking was affecting me personally and my health. And it was also affecting my kids, even though, you know, I remember being that young mom and thinking, oh, I know this isn't good for me, but I just want to do this. So I'm going to keep doing it. But when they get older, I'm going to have to make a change. When they start picking up and realizing what I'm actually doing, I'm mm -hmm. going to have to make a change. I remember thinking that, like knowing in the back of my head. And what I learned later on was I was battling what they call cognitive dissonance for over well over 20 years where I knew it was not good for my health. I knew it was not good for my well-being. But at the same time, something kept drawing me back to it. Mm -hmm. And I just kept, kept doing it. So when my boys, um, like I mentioned, got a little bit older, I just really started to evaluate things. I had just gotten through um, a long summer of just heavy drinking at our neighborhood pool with all of my friends, because that's what we did every weekend. We would just bring the drinks to the pool and just hang out. And I thought to myself, you know, I am just so sick and tired of feeling sick and tired all the time. I am so sick and tired of feeling exhausted all the time. I was never a good sleeper. I always had insomnia since I was a teenager, always struggled with sleep. And then I, I just said, I'm just, you know, I'm, I don't know what kind of a mother I'm being right now. So I felt, I think the guilt really set in where I decided I just woke up one day. It was the day after Labor Day. And I said to myself, I'm done. I'm, I'm not drinking anymore. I stopped. I ended up going to AA for two months to get some support because I didn't know where to go. I was alcohol free for about six months when I started to teeter and said, I'm feeling like I'm, you know, I have FOMO. I'm missing out. I'm not fitting in with my friends, all of that. Mm -hmm. I told my husband, I wanted to try to moderate, tried to, I, I went in moderating and he was very supportive of me. And I quickly spiraled back to the same pattern, if not even drinking more. And I drank heavily on the weekends again for another year and a half mm -hmm. until that second year after that first labor day. So that was 2016 and 2018. I woke up the same day after labor day, after that long summer at the pool of binge drinking, I said to myself, I am done. I am done. I'm putting myself first. I'm going to care for myself. I'm going to love myself. I'm going to put my health number one. I'm going to put my son's number one. I want to be that great role model that I want to be for my kids because they're noticing, you know, because I can go back to a couple months prior to that. I would sit at home Friday night on the couch with my boys and I would I would sit there with a bottle of red wine while they watched the movie. And I would drink an entire bottle of red wine during family movie night. And one night I remember saying to myself, Allison, 
what are you doing? Mm. And so that was just a real wake up call for me. So the second time around, when I finally decided to quit for good, I found this naked mind. I read it. It made a world of a difference for me. I educated myself. I immersed myself in learning more about it. And in the end, it was such an aha eye opening moment for me when I realized, you know, um, I realized that it wasn't anything wrong with me. It was with the addictive substance that I was drinking. And that whole time when I was in AA, AA practices, and it helps tons of people. And I think it's a great program. But what they teach you there is that, you know, there's something wrong with you. And that just didn't, it didn't jive with me. So mm -hmm. what I learned from this naked mind and what I learned by educating myself made a world of a difference. I've made a complete mindset shift. And now I am thankful that I don't drink and that alcohol is irrelevant to me. So that led me to becoming a coach to help other moms with a similar issue like I had, because I think it's just not talked about enough. It's, it's almost like society shuns it. Like, what do you mean you don't drink? They treat it like it's such a normal thing. Mm -hmm. and, I, and, and I suffered in silence for so long. I had nobody to talk to about it. And I don't want moms to feel that way because it's not, it's not something that you need to do. It's not something that you need to overindulge to deal with your things. There's other ways to handle it. There's other ways to do it. And that's why I became a coach to kind of pay it forward and help support moms who are in need like I was. Oh, that's amazing. That is such a, a great story. And I think a lot of moms can relate to that. Um, I think society, a lot of it has to do with society, doesn't it? I mean, absolutely. we are brought up that way, um, mm -hmm. knowing mm -hmm. that drinking is normal and it's part of our everyday lives or our friends' lives. And it's at every occasion, like mm -hmm. birthday yes. parties baby showers, everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it feels so normal. So when people do think they have a problem, you're right. They don't, they don't really have anywhere to go or anybody mm -hmm. to talk to about it because if you talk to somebody about it, they're like, it's just alcohol. You're fine. We all do it kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Exactly. Well, that's amazing. I'm glad that you're doing what you do because you're going to be helping lots of people. I'm sure you already are, but mm -hmm. um, why is it so difficult for moms or anyone for that matter to stop drinking? especially without support. Cause you, like you said, you tried to do it once uh, and you did go to AA and you even had support, but mm -hmm. then, you know, why is it difficult? Um, I think it kind of goes back to what you just mentioned about society. I think that it's just so commonplace in our society that it's almost expected that you are going to drink. And, you know, when you think about it, alcohol is the only drug that we have to make a reason for, for not drinking. We have to justify for not for not taking is alcohol. And that's crazy when you think about that, right? Like if I was to say, oh, you know, I'm addicted to this other drug, people would be, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. But to say alcohol, it's it's clearly a drug and it's clearly supported in society and, you know, marketing and, and commercials, they all glamorize it. Like it's something that you need in your life, that it's something that, um, you know, makes you sexy or makes you a better mom, which is a huge one. You know, I've heard other, so many moms say, well, I think it helps me be a better mom. And then you really have to break that down and think, well, is it making you be a better mom? I mean, how present are you being with your kids when you, when you have a, a glass or two of wine, mm -hmm. you know, just, do you have to take a look at all of that? So I think it's really hard to um, kind of, you know, go it on your own without getting some sort of support, whether, like I said, finding a program that works for you or somebody that's been there before, somebody who's been there, done that, knows how you feel. And, you know, because for example, I was that girl that was the party girl, the fun girl that never in a million years thought that I would ever stop drinking. And here I am today telling you that it's possible. And my life is so much more fulfilled now than it ever was in my entire life. So, um, incredible. I yeah. Love that. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Why, why is it important for moms to stop drinking or at least cut back on alcohol? Why do you think? I think it's first, like I mentioned earlier, you know, moms need to put themselves first more. It's hard because they have that whole little saying like, Oh, put the oxygen mask on you first before you take care of anyone else. You're going to be a better mom. And mm -hmm. I, I fully hundred percent believe that, but you know, if mom isn't feeling good, if mom isn't healthy and taking care of herself, then she's not going to be a good mom or even a good wife. She's not going to be a good support for her family. She's not going to feel good. She's not going to, you know, I mean, I know for myself, I had worries in the back of my mind constantly. Oh my gosh, what am I doing? You know, I'm drinking all this alcohol. Someday I might end up with breast cancer. What am I doing? So I think that that's 
that's part of it. And then I also think that the other part of it is that just being a positive role model for, for their kids, I think is so important. And, and I realized that because, you know, society is really portraying it that parents, they go to all these events, like you said, or hang out with friends and, and all of our kids are seeing adults with alcoholic beverages in their hands. And they're realizing they're thinking to themselves, oh, well, I guess we need to have that to have fun in life. You know, kids are growing up and they're believing that it's necessary to have a drink in your hand, to have fun. Yeah. And there's just, that's just not the truth. And I know for me, I know how much that I suffered silently for over 25 years with what I was doing that I would never want my children to feel the way that I felt. And I just think it's so important. I think, and again, I th it's just something that's not really talked about because it's almost like taboo in society. Don't cut down alcohol. Don't do this or that, but it's, but I'm, it's just the reality of it all. Yeah. Yeah. That's so true. Um, I mean, kids have fun the, the way they are at, like at such a young age yes. and yes. like once you introduce alcohol, once they're old enough, they kind of do go to that to have fun. Don't mm -hmm. like adults do that. We yep. let's, let's get together for a barbecue, crack the beers, crack the right. wine. And yep. uh, it's, it is a shame because it, you can have fun without it. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's, it's kind of crummy actually that you depend on it to have fun or you depend on it to alleviate stress or, mm -hmm. or whatever it is. So yeah, um, it's a good thing to think about actually. Mm -hmm. um, how do you support moms um, while they're, they want to go through changing their relationship with alcohol? How do you do that through your coaching programs? Well, the way the approach that I have is sort of like called a, um, a switch versus seed approach, which means a switch is something that you would use to kind of immediately make a change in your emotional state when you're feeling stressed or you're feeling anxious, just something, you know, Oh, I'm feeling so anxious about this or my kids driving me nuts. What can I do to make myself feel better? Oh, I'm going to grab a, a, a glass of wine. Cause we know that once you have that glass of wine, it temporarily makes you feel better, mm -hmm. but that's only a temporary feeling. And after that happens, you know, if you end up overindulging, then what happens after that, then you don't feel so good the next day. So you have to take a look at that and the negative consequences of all that. So that's a seed. A switch is more of kind of like planting something in your life to cultivate it. That's going to be ongoing and sustain you. So you can handle these stressful or anxious situations more readily. And that would be um, possibly putting in some mindfulness practices into your life or healthy, sustained eating, or just really focusing on your sleep or, um, you know, mindset shifts is huge. That's really what helped me is I work a lot with moms on their mindset and just changing their thinking around alcohol and not only alcohol, but other things in their life that they may be kind of conflicted about. Yeah. So it's just uh, more of, you know, I'm giving you some tools to keep in your toolbox so that you have them. And if you are to develop, it's, it's, it's more about, it's about, you know, I know a lot of moms will feel deprived, but what do you mean you're taking my alcohol away? What do you mean I can't drink anymore? But that's not what it is. It's not about taking things away. We wanna give you things. We wanna add things to your life that are positive and, and, and make you feel like you're more grounded and balanced. So then at the end of the day, when your um, decision-making fatigue sets in at five o'clock because of all those decisions you've been making all day long as a mom, mm -hmm. and you want to reach for that beverage as just, oh, I just need to relax. You won't need it anymore because you'll be able to, you'll be balanced. You'll be able to have other tools that are going to make you, you're just going to feel better. It's just going to turn things into, you know what? I don't need that. I don't need to go down that road and I have something to support me. Yeah. That sounds great. Fantastic. Um, what is one of the top questions that you get asked by your clients? I would say one of the top questions I get asked by my clients is, well, now that you don't drink, what do you do for fun? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of laugh at that because I'll yeah. be honest, when I drank, I looked at it as that was my fun. Yeah. And you could have asked me, you know, five years ago when I was drinking, well, Allison, what do you do for fun? What are your hobbies? And I would sit there and I would say to you, um, hanging out with my husband and having some wine on the porch, hanging out with my girlfriends, going to ladies night outs and drinking. I mean, that was all I could think about. And I just, um, 
that was my fun. And to me, was it really fun in the end? No, because I can't tell you how horrible the next day was the next few days and how it really affected me. And so what do I do for fun now is I choose to do things that don't have negative consequences. And that could be a wide range of things from, I, I love to read, I love to be outside, I love to go hiking, I love to take long walks with my dogs, I love to go to the beach, I love to, um, I love to play tennis, I love to play with my kids. I have three boys who are, I have twins who will be 15 next month, and I have a, another son who will be 12 next month, and my boys ask me to play with them still, and I'm like, for two teenagers, I'm just so my heart is so full that they want to hang out with me. And mom, will you come outside and jump on the trampoline with me? Mom, will you come outside and play catch with me so we can play with the dogs? I mean, that's my fun. And I'm, I'm, I'm there. I'm hundred percent fully present. I'm enjoying myself. And, you know, my kids are just connecting with me. They're connecting with me and it's an amazing feeling. Oh, that's so beautiful. Um, so that's probably one of them is being present, but what are the biggest benefits that you think moms would notice from changing their relationship with alcohol? Mm -hmm. Well, definitely um, being more present as we just talked about. Also hundred percent having more energy, having better focus, less brain fog, less. Um, I know for me, I had so much chatter in my brain about um, alcohol and about how much should I drink? What should I drink? And then when I was trying to moderate, how much should I have? What can I do? And how much, how excited I was for five o'clock to roll around on Friday. I mean, I had so much chatter in my brain. And then once I stopped, it freed up my mind just to have so much more brain space to do things and think about things I really want to think about. Um, and I, I have a client now who recently shared with me, I've been working with her for a few weeks, but she shared with me that, you know, this is like a whole new world for her. She has three younger kids and she feels like she is connecting with them so much more now that even her middle son who has a little bit of an anxiety issue, mm -hmm. she's, she, she notices that he's really calmed down and that he's, he's connecting with her more. Oh. And it's just bringing her so much happiness because she never knew that any of this would be possible in her life. And now she's feeling like, wow, this is an amazing thing that I'm doing here, not only for myself, but for my family. Oh, she must feel like she's on top of the world right now. Yes, for sure. Oh. And then, and then one quick one I want to share with you that I forgot to mention is sleep. Your sleep gets so much better. Because as I mentioned, I had insomnia my whole life. And when I stopped drinking, my sleep got so much better. Because what I didn't know, I didn't know until I learned about it was alcohol can stay in your system for up to seven to 10 days before it completely detoxes. Wow. So I was not giving myself a break since I was drinking, you know, I took Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday off, but then I'd be drinking Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I was never clearing out my whole brain and letting myself rebalance. Mm -hmm. So that was a huge aha moment for me because I went to a sleep study when I was younger. I took sleep medications. I did cognitive behavioral therapy. I did everything I tried to do right for sleep mm -hmm. and nothing ever worked for me. And the magic pill for me was just quit drinking. It was amazing. Wow, I didn't know it took so long to, mm -hmm. to eliminate it, it for your system. It definitely that. varies between people. It can be up to seven to 10 days. Some people are five days. Right. Um, I was definitely longer, but like I said, I wasn't giving myself the break and it's just, right. it just lingers. And Funny because you think it's like out of your system the next day. <laughs> like, no, <laughs> no, I actually have, I have one of my clients does say to me that she notices that on day five, after she stops drinking, she gets a really high level of anxiety. And she asked me about that. She's like, it's really uncomfortable. I'm so anxious. I, I don't know what it is. And I, I said to her, that's because the alcohol is finally coming out of your system. You're, 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 that's what happens when you part, a big part of the hangover is your, your anxiety increases tenfold. And she's feeling that on day five. And she's very aware of that, that that's what happens. Wow. Amazing. So then you have to figure out other ways to deal with the anxiety as opposed to going mm -hmm. back to drinking. Exactly. Wow. Um, do you have any tips or advice to offer mamas who want to take that first step to cutting back or, or um, getting rid of alcohol altogether? Yes, I would say just start exploring it for yourself. Just become, I think the number one thing is to be open-minded about it. And to become aware of your situation and aware of your drinking, for example, start to notice, um, you know, 
what triggered me? Why did I pick up this drink? And how did I feel when I had the drink? How did I feel half an hour after I had the drink? How did I feel or how did I sleep that night? How did I feel the next day? Maybe even keep a journal, just log it in just to keep be aware because I think that's what it is, is that when I was in the midst of it all, although I knew I felt really yucky, I wasn't really being aware and paying attention to why I was really drinking and where that was all coming from and how I was really feeling step by step. So becoming more aware of it for sure and just keeping track of that. Um, also kind of changing that mindset to FOMO, like fear of missing out. I'm not gonna fit in. What am I gonna do? The FOMO is, um, you know, turn it around, turn it around to, I say, use the one JOMO, use the acronym JOMO, which is the joy of missing out. Mm. And that's where I am now because I have the joy of missing out on you know, having a hangover the next day. Not, I don't have to lay on the couch all day long like I used to and not inter, you know, integrate myself with my sons because I'm too tired to do anything. Like I, I have the joy of missing out now in some situations because that's what works for me. Mm -hmm. So I would say start with that, just become more, the awareness is the big part of it, just being aware of it, why you're drinking and, and what you're using it for and that sort of thing. And yeah. then of course, in the end, get some support, reach out to people. Don't be shy. It's hard because it's a society where it makes you feel shameful that you have to admit that you have an issue with alcohol. And that's why so many people have issues because they're afraid to speak up, but it's, it's okay. Like reach out. There are so many people there to support you. There's so many online communities. There's so many different groups. So just please don't be afraid to reach out. Not every process is going to work for everyone, but I think at some point somebody finally lands into something that works for them. And just, that's my advice. Don't be afraid to reach out. Right. Yeah. Sounds like, uh, it can change your life. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So thank you. Thank you for all of that. That was so informative. Um, and mamas, if you'd like to find out more, you can visit her website at thehealthymomcoach.com. And also check out her Facebook page, The Healthy Mom Coach, and her Instagram page at thehealthymomcoach.allison. And Allison has one L, but I will post all of those for you. And I'll also post a link um, for you to schedule a breakthrough session if anyone's interested. And uh, I just wanted to thank you again for all that wonderful information that you shared with us and for being with us today. Thank you, Carol. It was a pleasure.